Hi YouTube, um, I wanted to show off something I picked up uh, recently. It is the really nice set from uh, Chaosium. It's the Guide to Gloranthia. Now if you're not familiar with this setting or this product, uh, Gloranth Gloranthia was originally created by Greg Stafford back in the late 60s and it was the original default setting for RuneQuest back in 1st and 2nd edition. And then when uh, Avalon Hill took over RuneQuest, they removed all the Gorantha parts from it. But it is a Bronze Age setting. It's actually really, really cool. And the reason why I picked up this product is because RuneQuest 7 is coming out, or they're calling it RuneQuest uh, Gorantha. Gorantha. Sorry, I keep pronouncing it wrong. It's one of those things growing up, you only said it how you read it, and nobody, you know, there wasn't YouTube, there wasn't all these things going around, so people would print out things all sorts of ways. Now that I'm older, you know, I'm hearing it on podcast and on YouTube, and it's like, oh, I've been saying it wrong. But anyway, this is a leather-bound, two-volume set. There's the Chaosium Dragon. It's really cool. Hardcover of a Atlas and kind of like a, one of those really great encyclopedia or atlases you'll get for like the Civil War or other, you know, historical events. Um, it's actually really great. It's 14 pounds between the two volumes. And I think it's about $160. But anyway, full color. This was originally kickstarted back in, I want to say 2012 or 2014. I want to see if they have a date. And this is just me off the cuff. I don't have a script. So if I go back or forth, you'll understand why. All right. Does this say when it came out? Ah, uh, 2016. So it's not that old. It was originally by Moon Design Publications. They had the rights to RuneQuest and Glorantha um, until Chaosium took them back. So now they do Mithras. But anyway... There is the world of Glorantha, and I keep moving between uh, portrait and landscape because I am not a good YouTuber. But this gives you the history about all the races, magic, runes, the world, everything you could need for the setting. And it is just fantastic. This is one of those things that... I love RuneQuest. Um, growing up, for me, my older brother is the reason why I played D&D. Because he would play and my parents would make me play with his friends. And then when I would get gaming product, because he had all the AD&D and GURPS product, because that's what he was and his friends were buying, I would ask for different things. So that's why I'm really into Palladium, because they had the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game. The Palladium Fantasy artwork was so great. It's why I got into RuneQuest, because it looked really cool. There was the um, Stormbringer, which was based on the Elric Saga. Um, King Arthur Pendragon, uh, Call of Cthulhu. They're all kind of based on this basic role-playing system that I was playing with as a child. And now that I'm an old, old man, I'm getting back into some of these older games. Because, quite frankly, I, I don't really like modern d and I know it's really popular, and it's kind of, you're not allowed to say that, but I think kind of D&D after 2nd edition hasn't been very good to varying levels. Um, so, kind of my hope with my channel and one of the videos I'm doing is to showing people out there that D&D isn't the entire world. And one of the sad things about 5th edition is, it used to be that if you had a successful Dungeons & Dragons edition, what would happen is players would strike out and start playing new games they'd play a d and d and then they go oh this palladium setting looks good or they play second edition and go oh wow here's teenage mutant ninja turtles or call of cthulhu but talking to a lot of 5e players they just play 5e it's the only game they play and they don't really know what they're missing look at that art though i love black and white art I'm not a huge fan of the overly produced uh, 5e books. I think they're hard to read. I don't think they're going to hold up as well. But anyway, I don't want to get on a rant about why 5th edition isn't all that in a bag of chips. Um, so this is the first book. It's, I think, 350 pages. 
uh, 400 pages. And there is Mr. Stafford, who created it. Sandy Peterson was the one who created uh, RuneQuest, and he's also well known for being a video game designer. He created Doom and Quake. And then finally is Jeff Richards, and he is the current creative director for Chaosium. Look at that back cover. This art is really good. This is way more evocative than anything I've seen in 5th edition. 5th edition is so concerned about being overly produced that they forgot that they're creating art for uh, a role-playing game. It's supposed to be played. They've decided, well, 5th edition, it's better to be watched on Critical Role as opposed to actually being played. And here's the second volume. This is more of the Atlas, which goes... So the first volume is more of the world, the people, and things. This is the places, and it gives you history and all sorts of adventure ideas. Um, really great product. I'm really excited I got it. I'm going to be running some Call of Cthulhu and RuneQuest uh, Glorantha uh, at uh, Game Hole Con in Madison, Wisconsin this November. And then I'm going to sign up to run some at GaryCon next year in Lake Geneva. So, And if I go to Nexus here in Milwaukee, I'll be running some stuff there. So if you see me, say hello. Um, yeah, this is just fun. Bye.